El Corral epitomizes Tucson's Wild West past. When John Murphy bought the land in 1915, the Tucson citizen mocked him for paying $15 an acre in the middle of nowhere. At the time, people thought it was kind of crazy to build way up here on this part of Tucson. Right, yeah, this was the, the, uh, the furthest east of anything in town. There was nothing east of Oracle at the time. The area at River and Campbell grew, and by 1939, El Corral Cafe opened. The restaurant changed owners several times until the current owners, Argo Land and Cattle Company, took over in 1975. Director of Operations Casey Wills says the character and charm of El Corral comes from all of the additions to the original structure. I'm standing right now on the porch and you're standing outside. So the uh, the original building you can kind of tell here is in white right. and it kind of has the little thicker walls mm -hmm. with the adobe. And you know, as you as the, the restaurant expanded, they needed more room. So they just kept enclosing patios and enclosing patios. Right. Casey is quick to point out that while they have made changes to the inside, like adding a living room area as you wait for your table and reconfiguring the bar area, nothing has changed with the menu. No, no, I promise you, we have the tamale pie recipe is exactly, exactly the, same. the same. The same gentleman's been making it for 25 years. Another part of El Corral's charm, the silver screen cowboy art hanging on the walls, all collected over the years by owner Dan Bates, an artist himself. The pictures and the paintings all started as black and white, and then they were colorized later. So that's why they kind of have this special kind of warmth to them. The king of the cowboys, Tom Mix, has a special place up front at El Corral. There's a shrine of sorts to Mix, complete with one of his actual iconic suits. Many believe Mix stopped at El Corral on that fateful night in 1940, when he died in a car crash near Florence. Yeah. You'd like to believe that he probably stopped here as well. We can't say that he didn't. Many other silver screen cowboys were also known to stop by for a steak or prime rib at El Corral after shooting out at Old Tucson. They likely spent time in the VIP room behind an impressive hand-carved door, as did many of the 80s hair bands, including Guns N' Roses. But it's not the celebrities or the decor that has made El Corral so successful for nearly 80 years. It's the food. Casey, you're taking us somewhere where the uh, restaurant goer is not going to get to see, but the kind of <laughs> sure. behind the scenes look at what is, sure. you know, the signature dish for you. Right, is prime rib. Right. You know, you can't talk about El Corral without prime rib. So inside of here, you kind of watch your stuff there. Um, we've got the, um, it's got some roast cooking tonight. We call them roasts in house. And um, they are about 16 to 17 pounds each. We're able to, to prepare. Um, Medium, medium rare, and rare all at the same time. Okay. And so um, medium rare is the one that we recommend. It also has, uh, you know, some juices kind of drop on it. We do a very light seasoning. It's uh, salt, pepper, and uh, onion salt, I believe, or onion powder. And, you know, make sure we prepare them. We cook them low and slow. So these will be ready in about another hour or two. Trust me, it's worth the wait. It's been almost 80 years. It's been absolutely Arizona the entire time, and we appreciate the, uh, the tour, Casey. Thank okay. you. Thank you.